Welcome back to the Guillemot Kayaks Workshop. I'm Nick Schotta, and we're building the Petrol Play SGC kayak with a kit from Chesapeake Lightcraft. It's my design, and they make the kit for this, and they've supplied me the kit. So my friend Bill and I are working together to make this kit so you can see how it all goes together. Bill has never built a boat before, and so he's here as a stand-in for you guys. Hopefully he asks the questions you might ask, and in that way, you get those answers to those questions while we're building the boat. So if you've been watching all along, you know I've taken one day of boat building here and broken it down into four separate episodes. So the easy to digest chunks. The first episode was assembling the plywood panels to make the hull. The next episode was setting those panels up in the forms to start to form the hull shape. And then the previous episode to this one was stitching those panels together, really defining that shape, getting it where it needs to be. And in this episode, we will take and spot weld those panels together. And by spot weld, I mean we'll use cyanoacrylate glue and put little dots along the seams. Cyanoacrylate CA glue or super glue is a quick way to get the hull panels held together so we can take the wires out and then in the next episode after this we will be filleting the inside seams and fiberglassing. By getting the wires out we have a clean inside surface that we can do that and the quick curing of the CA glue lets us get right to that. And as I said somewhere in one of these episodes I can often get from the unboxing to the fiberglassing in one day with a class full of people. So that is a bit of a rush to do that. You guys working on your own can do it in a lot more leisurely pace. And I think some, and I think the way I've broken the, these episodes up, you can see that as one day at a time. Some of the episodes you can combine into two days, depending on how much time you have, but. I think it's a sort of logical way for you to break it down. So let's get to spot welding. So that's all the stitches in there. Looks pretty good. What we're going to look for as far as getting these seams aligned isn't what it looks like on the inside. It's what it feels like on the outside. So when we're lining up these seams, this wants to be nice and smooth across that seam. And so it's really the most sensitive thing you have for that is just running your hands across. You'll feel that as a nice smooth transition where if I have it a bit this way, there's something snagging there. If I have it this way, it's overhanging. You can, we want that nice and smooth and continuous. So it pays to sort of inspect everything before you get too deeply into this. And if you find a place that's really problematic, you might pull the wires out, redo them. Um, but if, if it all feels pretty good, th this place, we have the steeler coming down here. And so these two chines here merge into one. And this will probably be a little bit rough we still want to do our best to get everything lined up. So it's a best fit scenario. It's a best fit. There will be the ideal steeler here would taper down to absolutely nothing. And we have it tapering down to something a 16th of an inch wide. So there's probably going to be a 16th of an inch gap at the end of that. Then once we get that and it feels really good on the outside, take and we're going to put across each seam every two inches or so just a little bit of super glue and you see how that flows down into the seam and since i was pushing around on that i'm going to be a little bit gentle around here so we're not trying to fill the seam with a whole bunch of super glue it's just going to be a little bit bigger dot than we used on the puzzle joints, but you know, quarter inch, half a centimeter, something like that. Um, 
It's like spot welding. Yeah, it's, we're just spot welding it together. And this is not what's going to hold the boat together in the long run. Right. We want to fill this seam with epoxy. And so the more super glue we get in there, the less room for epoxy there is. Right. So we don't fill it with the super glue. We're just trying to hold it together long enough that we can get the epoxy and fiberglass in. Oh. Oh. After this is glued up, we're not going to strap it to the roof of the car and take it across the country. We'll keep it on the workbench, pull out all the wires, and then um, do the fillets on the inside seam. But this process, we're going to do all the seams full length, check the bottom seam, line that up nicely. If you've got to push on it a little bit to line things up. And again, just a, a dot and a dot. And if you've got a seam that's lining up well and you can move along, you don't need to spritz every six inches. You can take and do that. So with the little bit you're using, it won't uh, flow through to the other side of the hull? It might flow through a little bit. A little bit? Yeah, but we're actually going to sand this chine over a little bit. We're going to round it a bit. You know, it's like a sharp knife. If you hit something hard like a rock, it's going to dull it. We actually, the boat is stronger if we round that corner over. Okay. Essentially, it's this process all up and down the whole length of the boat. And I will show you what we'll do in the uh, ends at the stem and stern in the separate operation. You can, uh, you just do a little bit at a time. You can't really go far down. You, you know, you'll have a sense of how far you can go without it moving. So just a little dot. Is it that about right? That's, that's probably twice as much as you need, but okay. it's okay. So just, okay. you know, and right in the seam. And so stick the tip into the seam. Oh, get and, it right and, in. And, you know, two dots per stitch. Two dots per stitch. Like that. Yeah, you see that one you put in. Yeah, you yeah, really an inch long thing. Yep. And, but we want it in the seam because that's, that's where it's going to do the most good. Right. Yeah, so if you need to hold, hold it while you're spritzing because things are shifting a little bit, feel free to do so. Just okay. don't glue yourself to the boat. So up here, where um, we talked about before, where there's a little light showing, do you need to use a little more glue or do you use the same amount? Um, you, the same amount should be fine. Okay. And so where there's no bevel, you have some different method for um, affixing it? Yeah, yeah, okay, we'll, so. we'll look at that in a bit. Okay. So if you glue this up and then afterwards you decide that your um, chine has an edge on it or um, is there a, is that a point of no return? No, we just sand it smooth. Okay. The, the fairness and smooth shape of the boat is sort of defined by how well these go together. Okay. Um, so it, it's, it's not, you know, not something you're going to notice a lot. Um, when you're, when you're doing this glue, go ahead and stick the tip right in the groove and don't try and drip it down into it just okay. in, inject a small amount directly into it all right so we're trying not to get the drips running down the plywood yeah. we're trying to get the glue into that that crack a matter of a kind of flexing the wood in different positions to, yeah. to line up. Yeah. Yeah. I've got the 
activator on my fingers, so any <laughs> little bit of glue that gets on my fingers instantly cures. The ends up in here can be a little bit tricky. There's not a lot of room in there, and the seams are don't have the the sort of groove in there because the panels are running flat together. But we'd like to make these nice and smooth across that seam just like all the other ones. I want to get glue into that seam without it just dripping down the side. So I'm going to flex the seam a little bit to, so I see the top edge of that piece of plywood there. And then I'm going to apply glue to that top edge. And go ahead and realign everything there and get in there with the spritz. Just hold everything well aligned. You can press things together, tighten up that seam if there was a gap in there. Might be able to take care of it right now. Just hold it for a second for that glue to set up. You got a little bit of squeeze out there, but and and I can spray from this side to get rid, get it fully cured. Here we have a similar thing going on on this side, but it's we've got a sort of shelf on the outside. But we should be able to get some glue onto the top of that, and then line everything up. So we don't want it dripping down the side. A little spritz. And now, get that lined up. Hold it until the glue sets up. I only glued my fingers in a little bit. We don't want to forget gluing the stem together. Um, we're going to pull all these stitches out pretty soon. And if we haven't glued it, it's all going to go sprawling. So you want to get glued down into that seam. We're not trying to saturate it with glue, but get some drips down in there. Try not to get it on the wires, just because we got to pull the wires out. And it might have to drip in a little bit. Try to get the drops to go right down in there. And we'll send a mist activator down in there as well. Some of those wires may get glued in, but that'll be okay. So what if I'm pushing as hard as I can and there's still, um, the seam isn't even in, but I'm unable to move the wood together? Oh, wait a second, maybe I can. It's tight. Don't be concerned about using some force. Oh, you can, yeah. Yeah, it's not, you're not gonna like explode the boat or anything. Okay, <laughs> I think that was my concern. <laughs> yeah. That I was gonna break the wood. Okay, um, up on the front here where the seam no longer shows a gap, do I stop? No, we want to glue that. Okay. Um, just, you know, let it run into the, the, that area. So, yeah. You know, just, it'll, it'll deal with it. It'll okay. flow in and we'll be plain, sanding and planing the outside to make it smooth on the outside. Okay. Okay, so we have now stitched it all together and put the initial glue in the seams. Again, the CA glue in the seams. We could go immediately now, <clears throat> as soon as the glue is dry, we could clip all the wires and pull them right back out again. The next episode will be um, clipping out all the wires, putting what we call a fillet on the inside seams and glassing it at the end of the next day of work, we will have the interior of this all glassed and ready to work on the exterior. So what's your thoughts on the day? Anything that uh, struck you as interesting or unexpected? Um, I think the, the interesting thing to me was um, the technique for pulling on the wire was um, something that took, took a little finesse and took a little time to understand that um, 
you know, you, you want to twist the wire to make tension and that breaks the wire. Yeah. You just can't do it. You have to create the tension and then, like you say, lock it. And, and that's what makes the seam come nice, nice together. And uh, yeah, but I mean, overall, um, yeah, you know, at the end of this day, you, sh you have a beautiful shape shaped boat. Yeah, it, it's a, a little bit deceptive because you think, you know, wow, we're almost there. Um, the boat's almost done. You know, there's a lot of work left to do. We've got to glass the inside, glass the outside, work on the deck, glass the inside, glass the outside of the deck, put them together, make hatches. You know, th there's a bunch of stuff to go along. But this is a very gratifying part of the project because you go from a pile of flat pieces into a three-dimensional boat-shaped object in a couple hours. And it, it is really pretty gratifying. Be prepared to be patient because there's a lot more work to do. Um, uh, so if you're enjoying this series, it's ongoing. Um, hit uh, subscribe so you can uh, get the latest coming out. Hit notifications so YouTube will presumably let you know when it comes out. I find they're not very good at that. But hit notifications anyways. It's supposed to do me good. Um, and then um, we'll see you next time, and happy paddling.